So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, for the people who may not know you, yeah. please tell them your name and where you're from and what you do. My name is Robert Jackson. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a Harlemite. I'm a city council aide, community activist, husband, father. That's what I do. In the past year, a lot has been going on in Harlem. Yes. Um, violence was at an all-time high. I mean, if not an all-time high, it's, one of, it's been one of the wildest summers that we've seen in a minute. You know what I mean? What is your role in the community and what programs are available to um, advocate against violence as well as help the youth? So I work for city councilwoman, Chris and Rich and Jordan. So this past, this summer here, we have a summer hope program. We feed, clothe, give out free books, children activities, bouncy house and things of that nature. But this is the only summer which I saw young guys walk around with hoodies on in 90 degree weather and a ski mask. Right. Hey, I don't know what the reason why is a gang activity or street violence. I don't know the you know what's going on. But we um, need to open more programs. But in addition, um, you know, I researched that also because my my son does the same thing. It's it's 110 degrees. He has a hoodie on, long pants, mm. mask. And two things that we have to be mindful of. Um, it's actually three. So one is, it's been said by certain um, researchers that teens who wear hoodies year round are um, basically, it's, it, it's an indicator for depression, right? This is, this is what they do. Um, the second thing is since the pandemic and with people being inside for so long, there's a fear of being exposed and mm. letting any part of their bodies be seen. Um, so that's another reason because that, from what I've seen, that that pretty much started during the pandemic. You know, it was sort of like everybody started wearing hoodies and three years ago and it just stuck. Now the ski mask thing, you know, that may be part of pop culture, right? I'm not going to say hip hop. Yeah. I'm going to say pop culture. You know, you see certain figures that wear ski masks and, um, you know, then the kids think it's cool, but um, and then lastly, it's also been said that um, some teens do it for a sense of comfort and security, right? Wow. It's almost like um, Lionel from Charlie Brown when he carried around his blanket, right? So you have that sense of protection. Instead of it being a blanket now, it's a hoodie. You know, you got your hoodie right. on. You feel like I'm not as judged because I have this, this garment over me to protect the world from seeing me, you know? Mm. Um Mm. because it's actually girls and guys. It's not just guys, right? It's, it's girls when yeah. they wear hoodies too. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I think it's just interesting how how we need to tap into the youth and, and find out like what's going on, right? Because I think part of it is a cry for help. I like that. Yeah, you're right about that, Tommy. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like, um, I want to say I need help or I don't know how to express myself. So I'm just going to become further an introvert. So I'm just going to try to block myself out from the world. And I'm not sure if you, you know, keep up with music trends, but like emo, emo music was a big trend for a while, right? Um, Drake pretty much started that trend where he made it cool to be emotional on records, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you have like Lil Uzi Vert, and Lil Pimp, Lil Peep, Lil Peep, what they call it, right? <laughs> yeah. In which they do the same type of music. And if you remember what Lil Uzi Vert's first song was, it was um, his. It was just one of his biggest records was um, something like "I Don't Care If I Die." I don't know. I don't follow these guys. I can't tell you, brother. Yeah. So the words have power, though. The the, the to further the to perpetuate the type of mindset that the kids have you know mm. it's almost like we want to be or they want to be super emotional right mm. and and then the, to to put it on top of that with what happened with george floyd it was sort of like we got what, what they call um we got uh, like pornography violence so we watched yeah. this man get choked 
over and over and over and over and over to the point to where no matter how many times you've seen it after a while you just normalize exactly you got numb yeah. to it you got numb yeah. to that to, to seeing that so these are things that we didn't have to deal with growing up that teenagers have to deal with now and as well as hope right yeah. what yeah. what do they have as hope hmm. because it's it's then looked at upon as like um social media like if i don't make it right away from a piece of social media conference content i'm a failure and right, everybody right. is everybody's comparing themselves to what's fake right because i can have the perfect blue light behind me the perfect microphone and always it's like oh my god he's doing it on a podcast but i could really this could be like a virtual background i could be sitting on a crate ball you know <laughs> right. green screen you talk about yeah green screen green screen you know <laughs> So these are all the pressures that the kids have to do with it. So my question to you is, yes, what can we do to help? We need to engage more with the youth. Um, instead of being petrified of the youth, we need to talk to them more. See how they, oh, gee, need to give them guys some advice as well, instead of giving them packages. So um, there was, there was um, about a month ago, it was... Uh, two teens that got killed up there on 128th street, um, 14 and 15 years old, about three o'clock right. in the afternoon. Right. No, 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 two, no, no, no. One person died. One survived. Okay. 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 I was, I went to the vigil. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I helped, gotcha. his, I helped his, I helped his parents get help to bury the child, which is insane to think that Justin Sheeters, some, some, some people at this point. Right. And, and think about this for a moment there's more value placed on, and this is no judgment on anybody. It's just where our responsibilities lie, you know, more value placed in buying designer stuff as opposed to buying an insurance policy. Mm. Yeah. That's facts. What you're saying. Right. Like yeah. a policy costs you, you know, it is. Well, let me say that $10 a month. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this, Tommy. Your child should bury you. You shouldn't bury your child, brother. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And with that, um, it's a whole nother discussion, but I think that as soon as children are born, they should get life insurance. Hmm. I don't know. That's a catch-22, catch brother. Nah. I mean, well, for me, this is just my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel that. I feel that. You shouldn't wait until your car catches a flat to have a spare tire. Yeah, you should have a spare tire ready in your back. Right. So trunk. it's sort of like, yeah. unless you're the type of person to stack money and you understand the cost of a funeral to where you're sure. saving that money, you know, you're not touching it. So you holding five to seven thousand dollars aside for mm -hmm. that moment. Somebody has to catch the bill, even on your kid's yeah. side, right? So that that's like yeah. saying if I don't have insurance on myself and I pass. And this is what happens realistically too. Now the kids are left to figure out how to bury the parent. Yeah, that's facts. Right? And it's sort yeah. of like these discussions need to be had even though they're uncomfortable to say like, hey, they're just basic things you can put into place to minimize some of the burden that you have to go through. Because the pain yeah. is going to be there. But it's like, it's already a painful situation. Now you have to try and figure out how am I going to get money to bury my son? Yeah. And everybody doing the, everybody doing the go for me. Even that, the um, funeral parlor still has to get paid. <laughs> that's facts. No, that's facts. So, so you have to yeah. wait. You have yeah. to wait to, to, to get that money. And what makes go for me so bad is that people have been taking advantage of it to where when things happen, People are becoming mm. less and less to give because there's certain people that just abuse it. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get a GoFundMe and you raise a hundred thousand dollars. You know, the fuel ain't cost you no hundred thousand dollars. Nah, nah, five thousand. Five to ten thousand. Yeah, five to ten thousand. Yeah. Basic, right? Two thousand to get cremated. Yeah. So, as far as your goals for the community and looking into 2023, what are some things that you're looking at doing? 
Uh, well, we need more social services, mental health programs in the community. We need some activity for the children that we're working on as well. We need to put some bills in effect to stop um, rat problems. Bills in effect to also to try to, because my the person I work for, a city councilwoman, she wanted to defund police and allocate the funds to education and different you know, nonprofit organizations. Got you. So how do you feel or, or, or what's your take on um, how is uh, the current mayor performing in the city? You know, Eric Adams is doing the best he can. Um, he just started off, for those who don't know. He is, he, but you got to get his act together. He does a lot of self-praise. Oh, it seems as if he liked the party. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the party as well. But he, but people have to remember, we don't work for him. He worked for us. He's a public servant. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you can party. But the bad part with politician is, people assume you can't go on vacation. They assume you can't have no sick days. You can't party. You could do these things. You're still a human being. Absolutely, absolutely. So, as far as personal goals for yourself, yeah, what do you see yourself doing in the next five years? Well, next five years, my plan hopefully run for office soon. I don't know what's position yet. Mm -hmm. um, the second plan is put out a documentary, put on Tubi, Netflix, or Hulu. Okay, that's going to empower people. Nice. And uh, and uh, you know, start my own podcast as well. Absolutely. L um, I also have um. I did like a little mini course. It's only like 20 minutes. I could shoot you the link. It's free. Tell you like how to set up all this stuff, microphone, unless you already know it, you know, but I, yeah. I can send you that as well. Yeah, please do, man. I love that because I love talking to people. You know, I mean, I'm a people person. I know. I know. So you'll be, <laughs> you'll be really, really, really good at this. Yeah. Um, now, you also work with um, Al Taylor. Yes, I used to work for him. I was what an was intern that? for Al Taylor. I shout out to Simile Al Taylor, good guy. What was it was that, a great um, experience. Great experience? Yeah, yeah. Where, where, I'm, where I'm at today. Got you. So what was two things that you learned from him that, you know, that just stand out in your mind? I learned to always be sharp and always come on time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because representation is the key. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'll give you a and I got a dingy shirt. They want, people going to remember that. Yeah, he, he, um, yeah. He, um, he moves at a very fast pace, too. Yes, and he's a Leo like yourself, so. He, oh, wow. I didn't know he was a Leo. Yep. 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 Yes, he, he is, sir. Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. All right. But he always well, on time, brother. He always on time, so. <laughs> I see that. You know, like when I went to meet him, he had meetings back to back to back. And it was sort of like they were all within like five minutes of each other. He keeps looking at his watch like the next person, the next person. His assistant is right there. I think her name was um, Wendy. She was right She's still there. there. She's still there. Still there. Yeah, she was right cheaper, there. With him. Cheaper staff. Yeah, to keep to keep him from talking too much. No, not that to talk too much. That people violate the town. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but he'll just sit there and keep talking. And she'll be. I like, know. I know. Yeah, you ramble. Know? Yeah, ramble. Yeah, yeah. Ramble. <laughs> <laughs> and they like, oh my, my appointment. Cause people, you know, they don't they bypass everything. Oh, he was, he was a minute late. He was two minutes late. Exactly. Exactly. So I try to violate people's time. Um, I love what you're doing, brother Tommy. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay thank encouraged. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any parting words that you want to leave with the audience as far as how they can reach out to you or any projects that you have coming up that they can look forward to? I'm working on a vendor project coming soon, directed by Nova Felden. Uh, I got a few movies I helped get on Tubi right now. It's called Miss God of Tales, directed by Bobby Peoples on Damon Dash Studios Homestead Entertainment. Bad Boxer on Homestead, uh, Cal Dawson movie. I helped put Black Rob with him. Rest in peace, Black Rob. Uh, G Depp be home soon for those who may wonder. Shot free G, G Depp and free domination. He be home soon. Wow. Um, they keep those guys in your prayers as well. Shout out to Bengal Smurf, good dude. Rest in peace, Freaky Todd. But yeah, um, reach me on Facebook, Robert Phil Jackson. Sounds um, good. Shout out to Harlem in the world, my family. Let's keep doing what y'all doing. Remember, who you are makes a difference. That's one of my quotes from Rice High School. Nice. So you might feel that you're, you might feel you're nobody, 
remember you are somebody. Gotcha. I don't care if you if you're homeless, if you're on drugs, you can change all those things to blink of an eye. Got you. Listen, I appreciate you, brother. No, I appreciate you, Tommy. All right, bro. Keep doing good work.